when Oregon got blew out by Georgia in week one, everybody instantly was writing off Oregon. Everybody thought that it was going to be a major drop off from when Mario Cristobal was there to compare to what Dan Lanning is doing now. And Georgia along the way has had a couple close calls, tight game with Kent State. They played Mizzou all the way down to the wire, and that wasn't expected. Mm -hmm. If Oregon got another crack at Georgia right now, how do you see it? What do you think would happen? Well, I think obviously it would be a lot closer game. Uh, I mean, the the first game was just was not competitive at all. I mean, you know, being Dan Lanning's first game, having a new system, having a new operation, playing a home game essentially against Georgia uh, was not what the doctor ordered for the Oregon Ducks. But I think Oregon would do much better the next time around uh, if they had a rematch. Uh, you know, it was 49-3 to total dominance the first round. I see the game, if I had – if they replayed it again in a neutral site – uh, I think Oregon would lose 42 to 24. Yeah, I think that Oregon has made some great strides, especially offensively when you think about what they're doing. I think their offensive line coach and offensive coordinator is doing a great job. I still think the talent level from Georgia is going to keep them a bit separated. And I don't know that if Oregon has recruited well enough yet to compete with Georgia, but I can see uh, a scenario where in the next two to three years, Oregon makes itself a major player on the national scene. I spoke with Dan Lanning a few weeks back when they were talk when we were talking about USC and UCLA leaving the Big Ten. And one of the things to me is he said it didn't matter to him, the conference, especially with the playoffs expanding. He just has to continue to recruit nationally and get NFL kind of caliber recruits. And Oregon is going to continue because of its brand name and the program is to be in the national championship picture in situations like that. But I do think that a lot of it comes down to recruiting. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Georgia, I mean, quietly, they have the number two offense in the country right now in total offense, which is kind of mind blowing to me. I didn't expect them to be that 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 good offensively and then they have the number four defense in the country so uh, you look at Oregon they're ranked 115th in pass defense right now uh, and their and their defensive total defense is 77 so defensively which is kind of ironic with Dan Lanning being a defensive guy their defense is not up to, to par on where they need to be with, to compete with the big boys right now. Uh, they've they've benefited by playing four home games. And if you watch the game on Saturday against UCLA, I mean, that crowd was popping. I mean, I was very impressed with the Oregon crowd. I'd love to go to an Oregon game, one of the a home game one of these days. But uh, Bo Nix is, is on fire. Uh, he's completing 71% of his passes. He's got 1,800 yards passing, 17 touchdowns. Uh, three intercept uh, or, or three interceptions. He's also got eight rushing touchdowns. Uh, he's their number three rushing uh, guy on their team. So, uh, you know, they've got Tony Franklin and a couple other guys at receiver that are spreading the wealth. Uh, so offensively, they look good. Kenny Dillingham's done an incredible job there. Uh, but I think if you if you really want to be critical of it, the Pac-12 just overall is not even on the close level with the upper tier of the SEC, or and Oregon's benefited from that. Uh, but I do think that they would do much better, and uh, it would be ironic if they ended up somehow playing again uh, in the playoffs if something crazy were to happen. <laughs>